Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel, Martin Elbert here. If you still don't know, I make videos about my life here in Germany, photography, some tech stuff. And recently, actually, I have started a podcast with two other expats. One is James, he's an American living in Albania. And Cameron, he is British living in Spain. So if you still haven't checked that out, there should be a link popping up right now on top of this video. Make sure to check it out and subscribe to the podcast. And of course, to this channel, if you still haven't done it, hit the bell icons in order to get notifications whenever I or we release new videos. Recently, me and my wife went back to Bulgaria for two weeks to finally make the wedding party with our family and friends. I love was only true in fairy tales. Oh. Meant for someone else, but not for me. Love was out to get me. And it's been a while since we were back home and we did experience a bit of reverse culture shock things that, uh, that felt weird uh, due to the uh, situation we got used to here in Germany. So today I will be sharing with you my nine reverse culture shocks from going back to Bulgaria from Germany. Number one is trash cans. Uh, trash cans in Bulgaria are already separated like here in Germany. You have the general trash cans where you can throw anything inside and this felt uh, this felt weird for us because we basically gathered all, all of our trash in a single bag and throw it away. Unlike here in Germany where we se separate plastic, uh, biodegradable stuff, as well as glass and all of those th things normal for recycling. Part of this reverse culture shock was uh, also throwing away plastic bottles. Uh, I actually have a plastic bottle over here with me. This is a German one and there is this little symbol over here. Let me see if I can focus it. It's okay. Yeah, so this little symbol over here. Uh, basically it says so yeah. Basically it says that this is returnable and you get 25 cents for each bottle. A lot of can metal cans have this, uh, plastic bottles. Basically you actually pay this 25 cents up front when you buy the the beverage and uh, here in Germany most people just gather those uh, cans and bottles until they go ne the next time to the supermarket and they return it. You get an, a small uh, note with a barcode stating how much uh, money should be taken off of your bill at the end when you finish shopping. So this was really weird in general in Bulgaria that uh, once you're done with uh, your beverage you just throw away the, the can or the, the bottle. I uh, guess we got used to our recycling and saving bottles and all of that pretty quickly. And yeah, I guess that sums up the recycling issue. So moving on to number two. Number two is that there are still restaurants and cafes where you can smoke sort of inside. It's uh, technically, you feel like it's a closed place, but technically it's not considered by law as a closed place. So for example, uh, two of the walls, or I think three by law, if they're removable, it's not considered a closed space. But uh, when it gets a bit chilly, uh, they tend to close up everything and it's still not considered a closed place. So technically you can be in a, uh, in a room where it's st uh, still allowed to smoke, unlike here in Germany, where those things are pretty much not available. The only places where you can smoke inside here in Germany is basically an airport or an office building where they have these special smoking booths with a super fast uh, air conditioning that just sucks up all the smoke. Uh, and uh, in general, in restaurants here, I haven't seen a single place where you can smoke inside. Number three is the situation with electric transportation, especially uh, in the capital of Bulgaria, Sofia. Uh, they do have e scooters like we have here in Nuremberg. Uh, and actually, it's gone really crazy there. Like right now, there are three different companies supplying e scooters to the city. There are also e cars that you can rent in the same way you can rent these e scooters. But what was really strange is this trend, trend they have to place the scooters in the weirdest place possible. There was this Facebook group which is named 
noticed in Sofia and uh, people just um, post pictures of interesting stuff they've seen throughout the city. But lately the, the group is filled with photos of scooters in the most weirdest place ever, like pretty much it's uh, borderlining uh, with vandalism or it's actually actual vandalism in my eyes, like uh, you're gonna see some of the photos pop up right now uh, and uh, you can see there are scooters in, inside uh, uh, inside uh, portable toilets, there are scooters inside canals, uh, there are broken scooters um, and all of those weird stuff, this is really weird. Um, the only thing we faced here in Germany with the e-scooters are just like randomly uh, placed scooters in the middle of the street but that was like the first couple of weeks after that, like pretty much everyone started placing the scooters normally. Number four is working shops on Sundays. We've gotten so used to the fact that here is nothing is working on Sunday. Uh, that uh, So technically we arrived on Saturday evening, but it was really late. So we just uh, went to bed directly. And on Sunday when we woke up, everything was working. We finished so much. Uh, stuff that we needed to do simply because most of, most of the shops that we needed were open and it felt a bit like uh, on the next day on Monday, Monday was already Thursday so this is, um, in my eyes, this is a really good thing in Bulgaria that you can do a lot of things during Sunday as well and this is something I'm really struggling here in Germany is uh, taking care of everything outside of working hours in a single day basically which is Saturday. Number five is a really weird service that we found in Bulgaria. It's basically, you can order a shisha over your phone. And I don't mean that they just bring a shisha and some tobacco to you. They bring a lit up shisha ready for smoking to your apartment party or whatever. And this is really, really crazy. You don't pay any deposits for that. You can do it 24 seven. There's just a guy that comes up and actually, the delivery was quicker than a pizza delivery. Uh, I don't know how they do it, how they maintain the shishas inside a car, how they, the hell do they even drive with a burning shisha inside a car, but they, somehow they manage it and it's really, really crazy. But it is available in Bulgaria, so if you ever in Bulgaria and, and feel the urge to smoke a shisha in the middle of the night, just look up uh, the ordering services. They even have an app so you can order like some cashews and whiskey or whatever, <laughs> it's crazy. Number six are the prices. In general, I've gotten used to this, but my wife still hasn't. And I do tend to experience um, some situations where, where I'm still shocked that I can afford certain things in Bulgaria that I couldn't before because of the fact that I'm on a German salary. Uh, for example, the hotel that the wedding was is one of uh, the most expensive hotels in uh, in Sofia and we were sitting at the uh, restaurant slash cafe of the of the hotel and uh, I was paying like three euros 350 for a coffee which is a normal German price for a coffee at any coffee place but uh, in Bulgaria this is considered at least I don't know uh, maybe three or four times more expensive than a, a nice cafe sort of say and uh, it got us thinking like how weird it was that three years ago before we moved here to germany if someone said that uh, i would have to pay so much for a cup of coffee i would have said that he would be crazy and i would never pay so much and yet i i can't afford it now and it seems normal to to pay so much for a coffee number seven are the services services crazy good in, in Bulgaria is like uh, you don't have to wait a lot here in Germany I've mentioned in previous videos that you would usually have to wait 10-15 minutes just for the waiter to notice you and bring you a, a menu or something in Bulgaria like for 15 minutes you would have already ordered and a couple of things would be already on the table in general services uh since we made a really big tour and we went to greece as well and we were in hungary we were in croatia the 
general thing about Eastern Europe and Balkans, service is crazy, crazy good. Uh, for example, in Greece, we were in this restaurant. Uh, even before we ordered, we had a big bottle of cold water uh, and um, some other stuff uh, put on the table. We ordered some club sandwiches and uh, Cokes. Basically, the entire table was filled with food and it was served in an amazing way, fast, and it was good. Uh, and combined with the uh, prices, uh, it, it's really worth uh, visiting any restaurants uh, in Bulgaria or Greece or for that matter in the Balkans uh, because you would get amazing uh, service for really low pr prices. Number eight is something I actually don't like in, uh, in the Balkans is uh, the road situation. Uh, this time we visited Bulgaria with the car, so that meant driving all the way from Germany to Bulgaria, which was crazy. One of the things that really gr grinded my gears on the visit is that they closed the main road just after you enter Bulgaria, and instead of providing a proper alternative route, there were 10 kilometers pretty much off-roading uh, as a welcome to Bulgaria, which was crazy. Uh, I mean, this is an international road uh, where a lot of the traffic um, from Asia for Western Europe passes and vice versa. Uh, I don't think uh, it's acceptable to have a 10 kilometer stretch of off-roading on such an important road and people should have thought of providing a, a decent alternative before closing the main road for uh, construction. Kudos for actually taking care of the main road as well. but. Uh, people need to think in advance. Uh, basically, I had a heart attack driving my car there. Same goes for uh, inner city uh, driving in Bulgaria, in general, in Greece as well, Serbia. You can notice when you reach the Balkans by car because living from Germany and driving towards the Balkans, you can actually feel the quality of the roads decreasing with each country you pass and, until you reach uh, Serbia, which has s sort of decent uh, highways, uh, like it's amazing that they managed to build highways border to border, no matter uh, from which country you come from. But the quality of the um, of the asphalt is definitely different than, for example, in Austria or Germany. You can hear it; it's like the car uh, becomes at least three times louder just by driving on on this type of asphalt. And lastly, uh, number nine is the fact that they have electric cars in Sofia available to, to everyone. Basically use an app to uh, book the car, unlock it, pay. It's super cheap, like crazy, crazy dirt cheap. It's uh, something like uh, Euro 50 for five minutes. And they have all different types of cars. It's not just small cars like a BMW i3. They have, I think, Hyundai's, which are uh, like a uh, four-door sedan. And uh, in general, I think five or six different types of cars uh, available everywhere in the city. So this is super amazing for people visiting the town. They can basically get around uh, easily and cheap with a car and I think this is a better alternative to a rental car. Uh, one of the reasons why I went uh, with my car directly to Bulgaria uh, this year was the fact that uh, um, getting a rental car for the entire amount of time I was going to be there costed a lot and uh, if I knew I had this option for electrical vehicles uh, maybe I would have considered flying instead of going with the car. Although we needed a car to visit Greece as well for a short uh, summer vacation, sort of say. Um, but for the next time I'm going to Bulgaria, I'll definitely consider not renting a car, but using the, the, the electric cars available inside the town. And yeah, thanks for watching. I hope this video was interesting for you. Uh, and again, if you still haven't done it, make sure to subscribe, ring the bell icon. Uh, let me know down in the comments as well if you've experienced reverse culture shocks when going back to your uh, country and what were those as well. I accept any kinds of uh, questions, uh, so feel free to ask. I will try to answer each and every one of those. And again, thanks for watching and see you on my other videos. Bye guys!